project to uh, create a robot uh, for use in here. The initial goals I had were to have a robot that could not require any user input. So basically, kind of like a lighting board where you could say, go to position one on stage and then hit go. And so the QBase system was my initial goal. Something else was the redundant safety system. I wanted to have e-stops, proximity sensors, some way to keep this thing from running off the stage if everything else failed. And something else, even operation. I wanted this to be something that any technician, you, an actor tech, could pick up and say, okay, all I have to do is push this button and I'm ready to go. So something easy to operate. And then the last was secure wireless signal. There are a lot of wireless signals in the theater, so something that wouldn't interfere with the mics or something that could be tampered with. Design criteria. I wanted to be able to fit under a stop 4x4 platform. I went to USIQT in Charlotte last year and somebody had designed something similar, so I did steal the idea from them, but I thought it was great. You could just drop the platform right on top of this and not have to build anything specific for it. And something else, I didn't want it to be really, really tall. I didn't want to even have to have steps to get up onto it so actors on stage can interact with it easily. I wanted it to be fairly low profile. Need to be powerful. Whatever you guys wanted to put on it, I wanted to be able to move it around. I didn't want it to have any issues with slipping or sliding, load too heavy, it couldn't pull. And then the last thing was a long battery life. You can't have a robot that's going to die halfway through a ship. So, design criteria. My initial design was done in Autodesk Inventor, it's a 3D modeling software. So that's how I designed everything, made sure it was going to fit together. I actually did a stress analysis in the frame to figure out how strong it was going to be, make sure it was going to break in half after I made it, all that good stuff. And then from Autodesk Inventor, it was really easy to export cut list to fabricate all this. So I knew what metal to cut, what length, and where I welded. I have just a few of the construction photos. Everything was built from scratch from this one inch tube and for the metal scraps we had lying around the shop. Another picture of it under construction. Alright, for hardware, it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. You've got this box here, which is, I call the e-stop junction box. It's a gutted router that's got an Arduino in it, which interfaces with the computer and these e-stop buttons. And so whenever they're pressed, this tells the computer they've been pressed. Uh, the computer then communicates via Wi-Fi with the router that is on board the robot. Then the router talks to the Arduino, which is the brains of the operation, and then that sends or receives uh, signals from other parts of the robot. So the proximity sensor will tell the Arduino, hey stop, or at the edge of the stage. The Arduino also controls the jack, which varies the pressure of the drive wheels. And the uh, saber tooth ESC, which is electronic speed controller, which controls the motor how fast or slow they're going. Here's a picture of all the electronics. Um, if we have any detailed questions on any parts of this, I'll be happy to go over this later. So that's just the entire control board there. Alright, what is an Arduino? An Arduino is an open source microcontroller platform. It, they're really cheap, they're really versatile, and they're easy to work with. They're mainly developed for hobbyists, so I've been kind of following them since about 2004 when they first came out, and they've come a long way, and they're really great to work with. Also at USITT, there are a lot of classes you know, going in detail about how the ears can use Arduino to accomplish simple tasks. Um, there are three main types of software in this entire system. This box here is running software that monitors the switches, of course, and then talks to the main computer. The main computer is then running another piece of custom software that's basically the user interface, the what you see. It's got pictures, buttons, what the user interacts with on the PC. And then on the robot itself, there's another program that takes all the signals from the computer and interprets them and tells the robot what to do, turn the motors on, all, all that. The main code is over 400 lines. I don't know if any of you have done programming, but I was very surprised. 
scope of what it took just to make this thing a movie. Initial goals versus reality. <clears throat> Unfortunately, due to time, I was not able to accomplish the QBA system where a user didn't have to directly control the robot. So in this current system, you actually operate the robot from this controller here, the Xbox controller. <laughs> it was really easy to interface with the computer. You just plug it in, and Windows actually already has software written to help your programs interpret button presses and everything. So that was the main choice for choosing an Xbox controller. And they're pretty durable. I'm trying to drop them several times. Uh, so yeah, just basically time was what was limiting me on making the Cubase system. And I guess programming knowledge. This system here, you can actually, if somebody were to come along and program it, all the hardware is there. You would just have to throw in the time and the know-how to make this a Cubase system. So there's room for expansion. It's safe. I'll demonstrate all the safety that I have built in later, but I was able to accomplish all my safety goals. If this thing loses a signal, if the computer turns off, the robot stops moving. If E stops to press, it stops. Or if it, on a case, you see this little tape, running on the stage, it does a proximity sensor, so if the robot goes over that, it will shut off. There was a lot of work in this this far, building and programming. As I know here, over 500 hours at least get this far, so it's been a very in-depth project. Capabilities, what can this thing do? Of course, it does another 4x4 platform, or 4x8. I have one made up, I can show you during the demonstration. It doesn't have any problems with interference from other Wi-Fi wi signals or other wireless signals, so that's really great. There's no control jitter from outside disturbances. I don't know if any of you have driven RC cars before, but if you have a, uh, another RC car near you and it's at the same frequency, you do get some interference. And you could actually lose control because that other controller will control your car. So that's that's great. I can remotely vary the pressure on the wheels via a jack. So if the wheels start slipping, you can use the control pad here to put more pressure down the wheels and you can do that remotely. So if you have your scenery on top, you don't have to pull everything up and adjust it. You can do it remotely. I haven't. When I brought this thing, I was working on it a lot in my house. So Andrew Moody and I actually rode it from my apartment all the way to Highland Village to here. And then <laughs> we drove around for two days and the batteries were still charged. So I have no question that these batteries will last for a show. A very long show. Very um, long show. <laughs> I had all the stage weight and sandbags that were down here out on top of this thing, with over 800 pounds. And it was still drive around. So I have not yet been able to uh, determine the actual max weight capacity, but it's pretty high. Uh, and it's very smooth operation. I'll show you some of the controls in a second. And what does it mean? What can it be used for? Traditionally, I guess recently, if you wanted to move scenery across the stage and not use people power or technician power, you would have to put the winch. Instead of that winch, you'd have to build a track to the floor, you know, put casters on your platforms, and do all that. You can take a whole day to set up. This would just drop a platform on top and it's ready to go. So setup time is reduced compared to a winch. And as far as the winch can only go in a set track, this can go wherever on the stage. So there are some pros and cons to winches versus this, but it's very versatile in what it can do. I guess whatever requirements for a show you have, you can probably meet them depending on what they are. It's safe. So, now that uh, I can show you a little bit about the control system here. This is the uh, user interface we've seen when we start with stuff on the computer. The first thing you do is you connect to this box right here, this is the e-stop, I call it e-stop dungeon box again, and that monitors the button. So if you need to press, pops up and it stops the box from moving. To reset those, you have to touch force, reset the switch. So you have to go through the process, push the button here to reset that, and then you actually have to push the button here. So there's no false restarts if there was an actual emergency, so there are 
step-by-step process you have to go through, so there's no false restarts. Since it is Wi-Fi, to actually talk to the robot, there is a uh, you would log on to your Wi-Fi control panel and select see the robot. And that's the actual sort of broadcasting which is connected to the SFA or a router that we're connected to the internet. And you can also enable sensitivity. There's a lot to see the drive. To actually make it go, the, you have to pull a trigger button. So, if the operator were to drop the controller and it landed on, say, a joystick, it's not going to do anything unless the operator is also plugged the trigger. So, you can drive, and it's why I was talking about the, the jack adjusting the pressure on the wheel. It's obviously loud, and you wouldn't want to do it during the show, but pre show or whatever nose problems, you can adjust it. Um, it's not made to actually lift scenery up, even though if there's nothing on it, it will actually lift itself. It's more to put more pressure on the wheels since they're solid rubber, they'll compress to the stage and grip better. If you all see the uh, dotted yellow line on the stage over there, that's where I have another wire underneath. So if we were to try and add that, it's going to stop. It's going to set that wire close enough, firm enough. The end of the stage, it's not going to run off stage. So if that were the end of the stage, we just stop and then run to the audience, which is always a plus. Uh, <laughs> if you're in a condition and you're actually going to trip that sensor, the operator can check the box, accept the warning, and approximate the sensor to stable temporarily to so get away from the edge and then go back to the driver and the show. And then I check that box so the proximity sensor is retrievable. Um, I do know problem backstage with LC monitors we're trying to always hide light and the screens are pretty bright so we have an IO which will decrease the brightness backstage. Also if we're driving around somebody wants to 